Everyone, we have some great new updates coming your way. Check it out. Okay, let's start this update with custom keyboard shortcuts. This project has been years in the making, and I swear every time we post an update video, a quick tip, or anything, someone comments about wanting these abilities. So let's take a look at how it's been implemented. Firstly, accessing this is simple and intuitive. You can edit or add these shortcuts via the More Options button next to each and every command in the toolbar drop down menus. From there, select the bottom option to change keyboard shortcuts. While you're assigning these, there are a number of things I want you to note, such as the feedback. Here you can see that when I try to use R for Revolve, it tells me that the key is already in use. At that point, you can decide whether you want to use a different key or override it. I do want to keep using R for those rectangles, so let's use a modifier key combo, such as Control, Alter Option, Command on those Macs, but let's play it safe and use Shift here. If you want to get really fancy, or like pressing five keys at once, you can take it a step further and combine modifiers. Okay, I kid about pressing five keys at once, but just think about all the possibilities. Anyone out there want to do the math to figure it out for me? Anyway, I'll use my new shortcut of shift Control r and I'm ready for my Revolve feature. And it doesn't matter which computer I do this on, because any new keyboard shortcuts I make will save to your Fusion 360 account, so they go wherever I do. Check Kaching's blog to see other details on this. In addition to the keyboard shortcut customization, I wanted to make a quick mention that our toolbar dropdowns will no longer stretch the whole length of that panel. In this case, with nine different commands in the Create section, the dropdown has been aligned to the left with a fixed width. Finally, we did open up the preview for our new tabbed UI in this release. To take a look at it, make sure to turn it on in Preferences. We're hoping this new layout will help maintain organization within Fusion as more functionality gets added, without inundating you with hundreds of workspaces. Keep in mind that this is a tech preview, so it may be a little rough around the edges at times. If you end up using this preview, you'll also find that when you add tools to your S key shortcuts, you'll be able to access them from the right-click menu. That's all for me. Pass it over to Bryce. Thanks, Aaron. Those tab toolbars look sweet. But now I'm going to switch over to some of our sketch enhancements. First, let's start off with a highly requested feature, CV splines. Now in Fusion 360, you will get two options under spline. Let's select the control point spline. By default, a fifth order degree spline will be selected, but you can manually change to a third order spline if needed. But beware, the three point spline will be selected by default in the sculpt workspace. These new splines are controlled with the vertices created as you sketch out the spline. Let's add a few more control points by right clicking on the spline. If you ever want to remove a control point, simply select it and hit the delete key. One of the most useful tools for understanding splines is the curvature combs. Let's toggle the curvature display on. These new splines can be controlled in multiple ways. First we can add relationships to the control points, construction lines, and spline. We can even add dimensions to control the cage. Next, let's switch over to this line down below. I want to select the relationship associated with this sketch. Here's a tip. Hold down your cursor for a long second. This will pop open the Select Other dialog that will have a list of items where your cursor is located. Now in Fusion 360, sketch constraints will be listed by their actual relationship name rather than by a generic constraint title. This will make it much easier to select those sketch constraints in complex sketches. Wow, those keyboard shortcuts, I'm gonna customize every key on my keyboard. And now we're going to get into some generative design technology updates. If you want to learn more about generative design, we have workshops happening around the world. Check those out in the description. There are a couple updates to generative design technology, starting out with the ability to delete multiple projects. Multi-select using a box selection or by holding control, and then right-click to delete as many projects as you wish. Note that this will also delete any exported results, so proceed with caution. The new pin constraint allows you to prevent selected cylindrical faces from moving or deforming in any combination of radial, axial, or tangential directions. The constraint applies based on the cylindrical coordinate system of the selected face. There's also a new load option, a bearing load. This load can be assigned to a cylindrical face and uses a parabolic distribution to apply the specified load to the face. For now, the load needs to be entered using X, Y, and Z vector components. Study materials now appear in the browser, 
and the new search functionality lets you quickly find and add the materials you want to explore. When you're ready to export a design, the iteration that you choose to export is now marked with an easy to identify logo. And the file can be downloaded right from the Explore tab by clicking on the green download button. For more details on generative design technology, check out the help page, which also includes helpful tutorials to get you up and running. I'm thrilled to be able to use pins and bearings inside of generative design is just more realistic. Yeah, and Autodesk University is right around the corner in November. Make sure to come. We'll be there teaching classes. You'll come and learn everything you need to know about Fusion. That's all for this time. See you later.